I'm Raluca. I'm a professor at UC Berkeley, working in computer security, especially in confidential computing and secure AI. And I'm also co-founder of Opaque Systems and its president as well. Wonderful. And I'm Marshall Kirkpatrick. Thanks so much for taking this time to speak with us. Absolutely. So, Raluca, this is the second Confidential Computing Summit. How has confidential computing evolved in the last year since the previous summit? It's been incredible. I mean, only judging by the registrants in attendance, we have doubled the amount of registrants. We have doubled the amount of talks and submissions. It's really been exploding on this exponential curve. And I would say that compared to last year, there's a lot more use cases and a lot more adoption. Another big difference is that we went from having confidential computing only on the CPUs to having them on the GPUs as well with the introduction of the NVIDIA H100 GPU Enclave. So now we can use confidential computing for generative AI and AI as well. So all these factors make the space really buzz and explode with excitement because imagine being able to use generative AI on your everyday private data or on enterprise proprietary data for productivity. How do you compare confidential computing to other data privacy and protection technologies? Great question. Um, there's a few out there. So one is a more classical solution industry uses for data masking and anonymization. Unfortunately, it's very well known that it doesn't work well. First, when you mask data, then you can't learn from it. You can't have insights. You can use it. Second, well, you're not masking everything, so you can use something. And then that leaks a lot of information about the people. And there's been over and over again data getting de-anonymized. So it's a very, very weak solution. The contrast with confidential computing is very stark here because with confidential computing, you encrypt all the fields. So everything is protected, not just some that are masked. But then you can run the AI under the encryption. So you get full insights as if you run it on data that's not encrypted. So you really have your cake and eat it too. And then another technology I hear a lot about people asking me is um, the cryptographic approach with homomorphic encryption or secure multi-party computation. And I do a bunch of research on that as well at the university. It's a beautiful technology, strong security guarantees, but it's still too slow. It's still, if you use it for Gen AI or rich analytics or machine learning, it's still orders of magnitude slower than confidential computing. So it's not really ready, I would say, in industry today for complex workloads is definitely not ready for that. So this is how I would say confidential computing, I would say today is the only solution that's practical to use with, you know, um, Gen AI, you know, fine tuning, learning, inference, and that also encrypts all the data. Amazing. So when your customers or other companies are implementing confidential computing, what are some of the, the primary challenges that they see in implementation? And what are some of the unexpected opportunities? Absolutely. Um, confidential computing, the way it's offered by the major clouds, and by the way, it's amazing that it's available in the hardware of the major clouds, because then you don't need the friction of acquiring your own hardware. But the way it's offered, it's, it's a low level um, where you need to have some expertise to use it correctly. So there's some friction in using it because you need to acquire the security expertise to set up these enclaves, there's key management, there's scale out issues, remote attestation. And that's where we've done a lot of work. So I started from my UC Berkeley lab, where we did a lot of research. We were actually one of the first few to have access to the enclave, thanks to Intel, and really play with them early on. We developed a software stack that abstracts away all the difficulty. So you as a user of the technology, if you use our software stack, which initially was open source MC2, now it's the OP company, then you don't have to think about key management, cluster scaling with enclaves, remote attestation, all these expertise requiring you know, aspects of confidential computing. You can just flip it on with opaque and turn on confidential computing. And you don't have to worry about any of this expertise or friction. You can just use it with your own workloads in your own you know, workflow and pipeline. So re this really came from the research because, you know, making things easy to use and efficient while keeping them secure and tight and using this enclave correctly was very challenging. But now that we have it, we've been developing it in the OP company. It's a very easy to use product um, that just doesn't require you to have any expertise and you can just focus on your own business. 
That's wonderful. What are some of your favorite use cases? What, which ones do you find most inspiring for the future? I would say, you know, some of my favorite use cases are, uh, you know, some of the use cases that Opaque has right now uh, with, uh, for example, you know, BMW or with Salesforce or with you have a European cybersecurity agency. Um, I think it's just really nice because they demonstrate the power of the technology in being able to um, aggregate, you know, confidential data from different silos, put them together and, you know, have much better data insights. They also demonstrate aspects like, um, um, a, a Gen AI gateway where each company can monitor what all their employees are asking and enforce policies. Like, for example, I know BMW dealership should not be able to see the data of another dealership um, or enforce, you know, auditing um, for compliance. So I would say those are some of my, you know, favorite ones right now because they show the pragmatism and utility of the technology. Now, going forward towards the future, I really want to see it used for better medical research because with access to confidential data across different hospitals, we know that we can find and cure more cancers. I want to ha uh, see it used for more for human laundering, for, for money laundering detection, human trafficking, because that's done still through financial forensics across different banks. So banks don't share data with each other, but they could. So I'd like, you know, in the future to see it more used for, you know, big societal issues because it has the potential to address those. Oh, that's wonderful. It's amazing that you have been able to do as much work as you have with European government agencies and, and in Europe. That, that's something that so many American tech companies have been reticent to engage in because of the privacy and confidentiality concerns. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. And that's a great question. And actually, that kind of um, challenge of all those regulations is what actually helps us because we're providing confidential computing and we're helping we're helping with being compliant with those regulations we're helping with having you know stronger security privacy and confidentiality so actually we found it quite easy and easier to engage with european government agencies because they care so much about privacy so they really care about using our technology 